Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hey. Uh, today I have such a lovely guest, my old time friend. I always do a background on how I know people. Um, I have known <laughs> Dulu for years. We went to the same primary school, but became friends in high school. Yes. So yeah, we were friends throughout high school and then in varsity mm -hmm. and then life happens. <laughs> Life happens, but the beauty about I think social media is you can always keep in touch from a yeah. distance, so you don't have to. It's, and it's what's happening now, like even the pandemic, like everything's so virtual, exactly. and it doesn't like remove from the relationship. Mm -hmm. It maybe changes the dynamic, yes, but doesn't remove the relationship. So I'm very excited to have Pillow here. Like it's the first time I see her in so long, <laughs> and she's done so much <laughs> since I last saw her. And I can't wait to get into this episode. But Pillow, please introduce yourself. Oh my God, I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> Hi guys, I am Pillow Jim. I am a business analyst at my 9 to 5 um, and when I'm not doing that I have a podcast called She Brigade where I interview phenomenal African black women um, it's, I feel like it's the only podcast that specifically focuses on black women and their career and life journeys um, yeah that's that's me that's that is you. me yeah. guys I cannot wait guys Belinda is googleable so please <laughs> Google her, baby. Google her. I just want to open this um, uh, Prosecco for you because Aww. I'm just so happy. My girl is also a recent engaged girl. <laughs> Guys, we're in the season. We are definitely in the season. Sorry, oh, my I fingers are like ready to <laughs> Okay, I'm trying to... Oh, girl. Okay, here's the thing. Uh, the tab. Yeah, the tab. But yeah, I just want to toast Aww, to her, yeah, yeah. toast to like all your successes, Aww. toast to your engagement and just wishing you all that life has to <laughs> offer. Like you are literally just a trailblazer oh, God, and so I, it's so amazing to be associated with like women, like not associated, but to know women like you. Um, I'm so passionate about women as well mm. and their stories and just to see you literally do something about it yeah. and like grow in such a phenomenal way is just like yeah queen <laughs> so to build <laughs> oh yeah uh, yay yeah. there you go queen i love these glasses i know they look extra but like <laughs> um i got them i don't know where they were from but like i saw them um you know the kitchen in lanceria mm -mm. It's a very nice. Oh, it's yes, a very I've nice heard restaurant. about it. I haven't been, but I have heard about yeah, it. Yeah, and yes. all the champagne foods are like with another guy. This is so cool. So, anyway, clink clink, girl. Cheers. So today I am going to be making coconut prawn curry. Uh, we are in winter, and it's a very hearty, warm dish. I don't know. Are you into like? flavorful yes yeah. give me all of it please yes <laughs> so my yeah. ingredients it's a very easy basic meal like and what i like about this is you don't need to spice it too much coconut cream is very rich in flavor so it literally brings out the dish you could literally season with salt and pepper and you could still be good to go um but i have prawns here um i have ginger mixed with garlic some coriander and i will be using um this barbecue mexican spice as well as some salt and a little bit of hot curry and of course our star ingredient today is the coconut cream so i'm gonna just um pan fry the uh prawns people always ask how do you know prawns are cooked very difficult because you obviously don't want them underdone but yeah. you don't want them overdone as well so the best way is to literally put them on high for like three to four minutes yeah, okay. three to four minutes on a high, and then from there, just poke it, man. You can tell, like you can, I don't know how to, you, but you can tell. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. <laughs> and in the meantime, um, Bilo, please tell us about your baby, She Brigade, how it started, why it started, where it is now, where it's going. I just wanna know everything She Brigade, because that is just like, I love that platform. <laughs> oh my gosh, thank you so much. Okay, so She Brigade is a podcast, which didn't start off as a podcast, actually. It started off as uh, just a website and Instagram page oh, where really? I wanted to just have people, women, come through and contribute their stories. Mm. So I don't know what that looked like. It could be an image with a caption. It could be um, an article. Yeah. Any, anything like that. That was the intention of She oh, Brigade. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. Um, because I just felt like I work in tech. I understand tech. I can build a website. People would... People need to hear people's stories. I can yes. connect people. Okay. So let me create a platform where other people can just contribute to yes. and reach reach more people. So yeah. that's how it started. And I was chatting to a friend of mine once, and she was like, "Why not make it a podcast?" Yeah. And I was like, 
Why not make it a podcast? So, um, She Brigade is now a podcast mm. where women come on, they share their career and life journeys. I think it's very important because I think when we go to work, it's as if our lives don't exist. The two work are so intertwined yeah. that I always emphasize to my guests that I want you to share not just your career because that stuff is Googleable. Yeah. We can Google you and yeah. find out all your titles. I want to know the woman behind it all, sure. where you come from, what has influenced you to become exactly who you are and to yeah. make the decisions that have brought you to where you are. And it's been amazing. It's, it's, it's introduced it's me to so like many so women. Amazing. Yeah. Um, the relationships are formed, not just from the guests, but from the audience yes, as well. It's yeah. been amazing. And how did you kind of, how did you determine what type of guest you want on the show? Because if we're going to be broad women, every woman has a story, yes. essentially. You every, know everybody I mean? has a story. Everybody has yeah. a story. So how did you come up with, you know what, this is the type of woman I want on my show? So I want, so what influenced that decision was actually my personal experience of yeah. being in a space where I didn't see black female leaders. Oh, yes. So I knew that I wanted black female leaders because I didn't have access to them. Yeah. And that directly influenced my career choices. Sure. And I didn't realize it at the time. I obviously you look back and you're like, why didn't I go for that or do yes. this? And I realized, oh my gosh, I remember seeing that one black woman who was in leadership and yo, oh, it was horrible there. Yes. I didn't even want to that's yes. not something I wanted that I, it's not where I saw myself at. Mm. So I knew because of my lack of access to black women, yeah. In leadership specifically, okay. I wanted those women. So okay. I look for women that are leaders in the different in, spaces. Okay, love yeah. that. And Guys, let me just tell you what I'm doing now. So we are quickly just, um, these were frozen, so don't mind the water. You can keep <laughs> draining it out as you wish, but I'm just waiting for them to get a little bit cooked. And then from there, I'm going to season them with this Mexican spice that I told you about. I could actually do it now. It would still bring in the flavor. So I'm going to season with that and just a little bit of hot curry. And then obviously your salt if you have pepper, guys. Uh, so can I tell you guys something? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's because you're growing up or whatever. But you know when you just put things in your cart like, <laughs> when you do groceries, uh -huh. like oh, man, I don't know. I never knew pepper so expensive. You know, like peppercorns. It's not expensive, but no, it's like I, I don't know if I know. That's what I'm saying. It's like one of the things it's I never thought really about. Yeah. And like the one time I went through my receipt and I was like. 58 rand for pepper. I was so shook. But anyway, guys, I'm, I'm out of pepper. But if you had pepper, you'd put it in there. As, as I told you, I put a bit of the Mexican spice and some hot curry. I was looking for some mixed herbs. Um, it's always nice to put like mixed herbs, Italian herbs in your seafood. Um, it just brings out, it doesn't make it too seafoody, if that mm. makes sense. Because um, sometimes seafood, the flavor in the food itself is so overpowering that it's fish. And it's just fish in your mouth, you know what I mean? Um, so it's nice to add a little bit of herbs. Um, so Bella She Brigade, you've just told us why you started it, um, how it came about. And guys, please do check out the podcast. They have such phenomenal women and to, oh, such phenomenal women have been on the show. Um, and so based on where it is now, it's being a big platform. Um, it's been uh, rated in South Africa's top podcast. Uh, you recently won the Mail and Guardian yeah. Top 200 for it, you know. Uh, how has the journey been and what were your highest points, your lowest po points and how did it affect your upbringing? Do you think it, if your upbringing kind of um, contributed to who you are now? Yeah, so, I mean, in terms of the highest points, for me it's always like the, the feedback I get from the community. Yeah. Um, the other day I got like a message from this one young lady who was telling me that her daughter yeah. listens to the podcast with her and she's now considering career options sure. because of the woman that she's heard on the podcast and i was like oh. exactly that's exactly what i wanted that is so beautiful because i didn't have that growing up yes and so like growing up i was always that person if you ask me what do i want to do i never knew yeah um all i knew is that i wanted to be like a businesswoman yes yeah you know you know, I, you, you, know you, you can't put it in a title, yes, but you know, title, but you yeah, know. Yeah. that's why, like, even in high school, the subjects I chose were so random. I had like physics, IT, and economics, yeah, like very random. I, I didn't know what yeah. I wanted to do when I applied for varsity. I applied for, I applied for law, I applied for IT, I applied really? for law, 
economics. I would never have thought. No, I know. <laughs> I genuinely didn't know what I wanted to do. But guys, by the way, Phil has always been a smarty pants. No. Like let, let it be known <laughs> that and you know, based on that, sorry, now that we're talking about it, you know, often in life you realize that successful people and I consider you successful. Mm-hmm. It's never well it could be luck at times. Yeah. But mm-hmm. most of the times I'm seeing a trend that the values um, the ability had always been there. Mm. Like it was always there, mm. it just needed to come out. Yeah. But looking, as you're speaking about your upbringing, I'm thinking about how you were always very diligent in your work, very disciplined, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah. As you know, and as many people <laughs> that know me know, my parents are very strict. Yes. <laughs> so I didn't really have a say in how diligent I could be, but I think that benefited me. Yeah. Really well. Like, I was not. Oh guys, it was stressful. Having a strict parent is so stressful. But yeah. I don't regret any of it. Yeah. You know, in hindsight. If it wasn't for them, I don't think I would have been where I am now. Yeah. You know, they taught me discipline, they taught me to stick to something and see it through. Yeah. That type of thing. So I think those are the little things that have really fed into my adult life and my life with She Brigade, my life at work. Stick yeah. it through, you know. So yeah, yeah, so yeah, the highs is definitely the feedback from the community guys. Yeah. It's, it's so incredible because I, 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 when I started Shibigate, I didn't start it with the, with like, here's where I see it in Seoul. Oh, wow, okay. That was never it. I only registered Shibigate as a business at the end of last year. Oh, And it's been wow. operating for like more than three years, right? Um, all I knew was that, oh, people like it. So I, 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 I trademarked the name yeah. a long time ago. Oh, okay. But I was like, it's not a business. Yeah. Have it. But I only registered as a business at the end of last year. So I never really had that long-term plan. I think as I go along, it's it's creating itself yes, yeah. um it's building itself into what it needs to be yeah um, because of the feedback from people because of how everyone responds to it etc so the lows have definitely been you know they say numbers don't matter now, but sometimes numbers hurt <laughs> it's not picking up as quickly as you would want no. it to <laughs> guys numbers hurt numbers i have hurt. like i have I'm like on, on my youtube channel right now <laughs> and so i get you because like you're there i'm doing yeah. this and it's like the energy 68 people 68 people watch my video what do you mean yeah and like people everywhere you go numbers they they don't it is true that they don't matter yeah but they play a part but it hurts because you put your energy and your heart into this thing and you want it to be received as much as you love it so it hurts so those that that has hurt i'm not gonna lie definitely relatable (laughs) and i love the honesty right and we're having a brief conversation about this recently we're about Yes, to a certain degree, everyone loves authenticity. So it's like, mm-hmm. oh man, you don't do it for the numbers. Mm-hmm. But for yes. you to get to that point of not doing it for the numbers, there had to be that change in your mindset. Mm-hmm. There had to be that change in perspective. And until such a time, the numbers matter. The numbers matter. The numbers are like, okay, then who am I doing it for? Like, exactly. Why am I posting and getting 10 exactly. lines? So what's the reason? 100%. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, guys. But now it's beautiful that your numbers mattered then, but like now because it's yeah. like, listen, Every week, I'm sure you're guaranteed X amount of like listeners yeah. now. Yeah. yeah, and and I I would like I would like check the Apple charts <laughs> almost daily, guys. Sure. <laughs> that is so. Good. And when I like, oh, you know, maybe this week didn't do so well, and I was like, yeah. oh my gosh, what am I doing wrong? Yeah. But like, you realize actually that over time you get to realize that these things don't matter. But yeah, yeah I'll be honest, it did hurt. But also the other thing that was difficult with the podcast it was. Oh, the re- like the no's, you get a lot of no's. You get no's from, from brands when you're trying to fund it. Sure. You get no's from guests yes, yeah. as well. No's from, even like feedback from the community. It's not all good. Yeah. I got an email that was like this long one. Someone saying, what is going on with your audio? I, I love your podcast, but I can't listen to it. You've, you've gone down on this. And I sure. appreciate that. Yeah. But it does hurt, you know, because you thought you were doing good, but... So, but it just, for me, it just helps me up my game. So yeah. I do appreciate that. But yeah, I can't say there have been many major lows. Yeah, because it's been mostly highs. It has been mostly highs. And because it's a mission-driven podcast, I didn't intend, I didn't start it with the intention of starting a podcast. Yes. I started to share stories. It takes away a lot of the yeah. lows. Yeah. yeah. Okay, guys. So as you can see. Um, it smells good, by the way. Ah, yeah. <laughs> that's the one thing that's consistent. It smells good. Anyway, so as you can see, guys, here are my prawns. Um, remember, we are going to be making the coconut sauce, so we don't want them a bit, we don't want them too cooked, right? So this is like about it, this is fine, it was on for like less than 4 or 5 minutes. Um, you don't want them too cooked because it's still going to cook some more, so that's why. But we're going to add them to um, add them 
the last okay so guys i just want these a bit more crispy so i've just put them on a low heat because i want that char if you guys have the time fry this guys put this thing on a fry marinate them in some olive oil and you're gonna have a hit um but Ulu, i wanted to ask you um when was that turning moment <laughs> you're a big deal when you realize that okay guys i'm no longer just like Bill and i'm actually feeling the podcaster i'm actually feeling the top two, 200 million guardian i'm actually feeling like top uh essay podcast on apple you know like when did you realize that actually hey yeah, guys hey, come to me correct when you come to me it's so silly <laughs> no but yeah so um you know that mail, mail and guardian 200 yeah. thing right it's actually so funny because I had always aspired to be on that list. Yes. And so great. I think everyone does. Yeah. Yes. So last year I I knew when it was um when it was go when when applications were open and the deadline. Yes. And but I never applied. Okay. You can nominate yourself. Okay. Um uh, but I think a day or two before the deadline, one of the people that actually listens to the podcast, so yeah. the audience reached out to me and said, hey, I want to nominate you for this list. I need the following details for you because they need like your contact details yeah. and things like that. And I was like, oh, are you sure? She's like, 100% and you're going to make it joy. Yeah. And I was like, it's, 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 okay. It's, it's her declaration for me. It's right? Her she, was, she was so sure. I was like, okay. And I'm not being so sure. I'm also sure that my girl's going to be on four <laughs> lists, honey. Every, I think there's now a 35 list, hey? Because... Because I'm almost 30, <laughs> but I still feel like you'll make the 30 list. If not the 30 list, girl, <laughs> Forbes woman cover girl. I am speaking that on your life. It is. I don't know. Oh, it's a season. Yeah. So no, but season, yeah. She, she nominated you. And I made it. Love it. Right? Isn't that insane? So, I don't think I've ever... I don't... Obviously, I don't see myself as a big deal. I'll be honest. Um, no, I don't because maybe it's because of the people that I see as a big deal. Okay, okay. And I'm like, I'm not there. Okay. You know, even that list, I remember when that list was going on because there's many stages that you go through. Yeah. I was like, I, I found out some of the other nominees and I was like, uh, I'll never, I'll never make it. Yeah. But yeah, no, but think of accolades though. You know, they say accolades don't matter, but I will say the accolades help give credibility. They open a few more doors because people take you a bit more seriously. Yeah. Guests are more interested in being on the podcast. Yeah. Brands are more interested in hearing what you have to say. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely. When you say brands, what brands would you work with as a podcaster? So, uh, yeah, and that's the tricky part in South Africa specifically yeah. because podcasting is so new. Yeah. Uh, like I remember reaching out to brands and. A lot of them are more interested in what are your social media handles? What are your, mm. Because that world is big now. Yes, yeah. right? They understand those metrics. What they don't understand is that podcast metrics is very different yes. to Instagram metrics or yeah. YouTube metrics. Yeah. Podcast metrics are far more limited yes. than those other metrics. So I'm actually working through a lot of convincing right yes. now, especially because my podcast has no video. Yeah. So it's not on YouTube. YouTube is a bit more understandable for yeah. that. But I'm not on YouTube yet. Yeah. <laughs> but it's And been... when she gets on YouTube, don't be like me who has like 160 subscribers. <laughs> Do the right Please thing. subscribe. <laughs> subscribe, guys. Yeah. But yeah, so that's so who would I wanna work with? I wanna work with any brand that is all of that is for women. Yeah. Um and that's my the the Shiri community needs. Yes. What do they do on a day to day basis? So like yeah. I try to get my I get to I try to get to know my audience very intimately. Yes. Like do they cook? Do yeah. they not? Do they yeah. have coffee? Do what like, what do they do? What yes. do they do they go to gym? Yes. So yeah. any brand that resonates with the lifestyle and of of my community yes. and their aspirations as well. Yeah. It doesn't have to be like what they do now, what do they aspire to? Yeah. Which car do they aspire to drive? Yes. You know, that kind of thing. Love that. Mm -hmm. That's such a beautiful way of looking at at podcasting and turning it into a business and yes. i know you recently said well you said not so long ago that you've tried to monetize she's a great oh, how is that going because in my head podcasting is like you know even like youtube if you're a youtuber like back in the day like some of us were like long ago <laughs> when you just watch youtube i didn't think people got paid because yeah. i just thought people upload stuff it's for the public let's go you know um but the more we evolve you see that people it's a lifestyle like in yeah, south africa yeah, already yes, people make money like mm. their job title is i'm a youtuber mm. and that's like paying their rent yeah. so i wanted to find out if podcasting is it similar and 
do you think it's a lucrative business now? And if not, do you think in future it would be able to sustain a lot of people? Podcasting is tricky because, and it's something that I learned through being a podcaster, yeah. that if you have a normal, typical, by definition, by definition, what like what a podcast is, yeah. like audio available on these audio platforms, and it's um, like not not two in SA. Hey, we just Spotify and Apple. This this there's, there's a few more. Really? Uh, Castbox. Oh no! Ain't no got time for that. Like, you'd be surprised when really? I look at my stats. There's all these. There's like at least ten other platforms that you really? can listen to. Yeah, hundred percent. That is so shocking because in my head, podcast is Spotify, Apple. Yeah, That's no, it. you'd be surprised. I wouldn't think of looking <laughs> anywhere else. Yeah, literally. Yeah. No, but so. It's if you if you have your podcast in that uh, typical definition, um, I think, or at least my experience has been that it's so difficult to monetize. Yeah. If you look at a lot of the podcasts that do have a monetary aspect, so should we get it not monetized at all right now? Really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, it will be. Soon. I know, but but are some podcasts monetized? Like they are, but if you what I've noticed, mm-hmm. I could I could definitely be wrong, but what I've noticed is that the monetized podcasts are podcasts that are. Uh, brand driven, okay. so you hear the what that podcast oh. by Ban Ban. So like the, the way they have it on the business. like nine oh seven, yes. like, like the the, the news yeah. channels, the yeah. money show. Yes, these, yes. okay, the, okay, ones. okay. Or it's either that, or it's podcasts that have video attached. Okay, to so like the money show type exactly. of thing. Okay, so that's how I've seen monetization go. Um, or you monetize yourself as a personality for your podcast. Okay, and. That's and then the brands want you, but you use like I come with the podcast, so things. yeah. So that's more the route I'm going towards now. Yes. That's kind of what's in the works at the moment. Yeah. Um, not my cup of tea because I've been trying to get away. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've tried yeah. so much to make my, to make sure we get not about me, but in order to make it sustainable yeah. and to give longevity, I have to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And like brand image, as you cut them onion, are you done with the onion? I'm almost there. Okay. Okay. Um. <laughs> We spoke of, I asked you, I didn't ask you, but like brand image. Yes. How important do you think it is to create a brand out of who you are? It's so important, guys. I don't understand why you wouldn't. Because, like, how do you know of someone? How do you know of a brand? How do you know of a platform? Yes. Yeah, and I'm sad I knew too. Like, ah, <laughs> all the shame, all the shame. Yeah, yeah. Um, how do you know what people stand for? Yeah. You know what they're about? Yeah. You need to have a brand image. And... I always like get so disappointed when I see people that don't put not you this time. <laughs> okay. But I always get so disappointed people don't put an effort into their brand, yes. into their branding. And branding is not just a logo or a name. Mm. It's your voice. Yes. What do you stand for? What are your values? Yeah. Um, are you voicing those values? Are you voicing those? Do people know when they think of the name of your whatever what comes offering? To mind. Yeah. What comes to mind? You know? Do people know when they come to you what they're gonna get? Yeah. So I think when it comes to your brand image, look mm. at people that you aspire to, but don't copy. Yes. Learn from them. Um, think about the fact that these people may have influenced you to make certain decisions. Think about the fact that um, you you're drawn to them, drawn yeah. to their pages, whatever it is. Mm. That's what I did. I had like a top ten or fifteen of pages I like. You know, and what type of girl, man? No. Oh, okay. I'm actually really not. Really? Yeah. I would think you're, you know, vision board. I'm, I'm actually really not. Yeah. I did my first vision board last year, probably. And has it worked? You... I I can't even do the physical one. I just have like I just oh, create app... like a a, a, a screen say, a oh, wallpaper. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it's yeah. actually on my phone. I'll show okay. You. Yeah, so that's that's what works for me, but I can't do. It. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> back yeah. to the, back to the, yeah so you i have like you have your your list of influencers yes. people that influence people that you look up to mm. and emulate them you know yeah as a start and then as you get to know your audience you better you grow into yourself exactly yeah. yeah i love watching i love listening to your podcast so i used to work like a very far in like the east <laughs> so sometimes my traffic was like a lot and i'd always listen to your podcast yeah. and i just loved how i started in the basement and by the time to get to work i've got it you know yeah and it's just like it's a it, you and we get all the information we want yes in the right space of time so did you know that that's 100 on purpose yeah because, um when i started my podcast i based it off of 
when I listen to podcasts, yes. I listen to podcasts on my way to work. Yeah. And then as I started releasing episodes and as the community started like coming together, yeah. I asked them, yeah. when do you guys listen to podcasts? And a lot of people listen to podcasts on their commute to work. Oh, yeah. And I literally timed it because the average commute to work is about 35 yes. to 45 minutes. Yeah. That's what it, whether you're using the car train, whether you're driving to work because you know our traffic here yeah, and how yeah, is together. horrific. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Actually, it's not bad, bro. You need to go to Africa. My sister, you <laughs> will. <laughs> Literally no, from the never, airport no, to it's never. so bad. So I'm actually very grateful for Isi traffic because it's really not that bad compared yeah, to like other yeah. African countries. Yeah. But yeah. But yeah, that was hundred percent on purpose. You have to know your audience. You have to be very, very intimate yeah. with your audience and give them the need like provide them with what they need, not yeah. just what you, you want. want. I get yeah. that. So guys, sorry, I'm enjoying this interval, <laughs> well, you know, this interaction so much that I'm not even like telling you about the food. But anyway, I did say it's a very easy recipe. You guys should cook this if you're trying to impress like a man and like, <laughs> they won't even know. They'll think, oh, no, this is so bored. But they're like, you know, it's so easy. So you know what I'm going to do now? I have some uh, red onions. Love chopped by me. Yeah, so sliced, uh, to <laughs> sliced properly by pillow. So I'm just going to um, oh, cook these. I thought the stove was on. Damn, but anyway, <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna cook these onions. You guys, I prefer red onions in certain dishes. Why? Is there really There's so much more flavor? Onions. There is, dude, have you had like a Greek salad with white onion and with red onion? I can't stomach white onion raw. Like, I can't. Okay, I'm a bad person to ask because you don't need we are no weird as it maybe I love onions. Oh! In any form, so, <laughs> like it's strange. That's it's so my, weird. No. It's so random. I love onions so much. No. I can eat onions every day. But if you're the one who loves onions, you should know the difference. Now I love them all. Okay, <laughs> red onion is naturally sweeter than white onion. Okay. So white onion has that bitterness to it. With red onion, it's very yeah. subtle and it's a bit sweet. Yeah. So because we're making a flavorful dish, I thought like just go all the way mm. in with the flavors. So I would have used um, white onions, but I was like, no, I'm gonna use red onions. So these are thinly sliced. What I'm gonna do now is add our ginger. We are gonna use like, this is like three spoons, teaspoons. Um, the ginger and garlic definitely adds that Asian feel to it. If you know, if you go to Thai restaurants, if you're into Asian food, you'll know that the two ingredients you'll always find is ginger. Garlic sometimes, but ginger. So I have added some ginger here. I am going to actually add a bit more of um, raw ginger, just a few slices that I'm going to remove after. But for this process, I'm just going to add a, a bit more ginger. Okay. Um, so, Philo, mm -hmm. you've had everyone on your show. Like, which other woman haven't you had? Like, you've gone from people that people don't know that you're only yes. finding out about yes. to household names like people with followings that are like oh crazy like crazy. verified people very, very, <laughs> very funny people and like because you've seen like you know that growth and yeah who else would you want in the show who are the women in your life that you feel you know when i watch she began because like for me um I have you on, I always have women of like valor and virtue on like, you know, and you're one of them. And this might be, I don't even say because my other guests don't feel a type of no. way. <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to find out from you, like who else do you want like on your show? Do you know what's interesting? I've never had a doctor on my show. I want doctors, so guys, doctors. Oh really? I don't, I don't know, is, I think it's a timetable. Yeah. Like, how, your schedule, timetable. Yeah. <laughs> But like, I need doc I want doctors so badly on the show. Really? Yeah, I don't know what's after that, but... I think um, there's, but there's quite a few doctors, like, you know? This is what, something that um, people don't understand about the podcast. True, I've had over 50 women on the podcast. Yeah. But probably out of... 50 40. phenomenal women. <laughs> Guys, and that's, there's so many, right? Yeah. You just need, you just need to, you know? Anyway, yeah. so... Guys, people have said no. Really? So, yeah, there are a lot of doctors out there. But so, it's not an easy. Sorry. I know a lot of people hard. see things and they're like, okay, cool. It's if hard. you're getting mang mang, surely you okay, can yes. get, like, no. you know, whatever. No. And you can't even take it personally. I think for, if I send out a DM or the majority of my guests, if it's not 10 DMs, yeah. I think maybe six will respond. The yeah. others may never read it. Some people never read them, or they may just you take me. Six may respond out yeah. of the six we'll get to scheduling with about four wow and out of the four we'll actually record with about two wow so that is like 
it's, that probability is quite like so I, I every single day, I'm probably like sending out a request every single day. Take two. Yeah. So there's a lot of women that I would love my podcast. Yeah. Uh, on my podcast, um, some. Yeah, you know who I would love. Yeah. Uh, the head of Facebook Africa, Nunu. No, girl, I ain't gonna act like I know her, she's but like, amazing. It's, it's a title for me. <laughs> she's amazing. I follow her journey. I'm like a little bit of a stalker with her. I yeah. love her. I would love her on my podcast. But like, as a woman in tech, I'm assuming that's why you would be more drawn 100%. to hundred percent. Yeah. But I also feel like we may not see that Facebook has a lot of drama. We're not gonna go there, but like. Facebook is actually very, very, very impactful to our lives. Facebook as a company. Like, the work that they do is yeah. actually so impactful to people, especially us Africans. Really? You, girl, businesses girl. thrive because of the stuff that Facebook has done. I think we think of Facebook as the platform where we yes, chat with friends, yes. but it's so much more than that. Yeah. And drama aside, it's so impactful, and I think that the footprint that she's created on the content, the opportunity yeah. she's created, business opportunities she's created for sure. so many guys. Oh, anyway, I love her. Well, I we hope we get her, her soon on the show. Yeah. Um, so as you guys can see, here's my onion. It is a bit charred, a bit too much, <laughs> but that's fine. What I'm gonna do now is add in the star ingredient, some coconut cream. I'm also gonna mix this with a bit of water. As you can see, I didn't add any type of seasoning to this. So there's no seasoning, only because you don't want something that's like, you know when there's just too many flavors involved mm. and you're like, I man. So this is how coconut cream looks, guys. <laughs> By the way. So I think the final parting is I would say is, all, just to all the girls out there, like don't doubt yourself. It's easy to say how did you do, but I think you have to consciously remind yourself that you got this. Yeah. And just, Go for it, man. You have to just go for it. Just, just do it. Just, just go for it. You know? Even if, like, we, I think we spoke about this offline, just about how sometimes when you do something, do it for yourself. You don't have to do things yes. to put out there in the public yeah. because I know that is very daunting. Mm. Cre oh, constantly create, constantly build, whether it's for your career, whether it's for yeah. whether you're a creative or a corporate person, doesn't matter. Constantly create, constantly build yourself, constantly do things, even if it's not for the public. And over time, you gain that confidence yeah, and then true. you'll be able to... Live it up. Cool. So guys, as you can see, we're done. I did add a little bit of um, feta because a girl is trying to improvise. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to do the plating and then we call it a wrap again. Thank you so much, Kulo, for coming. Um, I can't wait to see where your journey leads and to just see, you know, more and more and more of you. Um, and you guys, thank you so much for coming. Uh, please do check out. Please, where can you, my subscribers find you? It's at She Brigade everywhere. Yeah. Uh, YouTube. Yeah. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at She Brigade. Yeah. And if you wanna follow me, I post random stuff. But yeah. like, if you wanna follow me, it's at Filunte underscore M on Instagram. I don't have a Twitter. Okay. Yeah. Love it.